I don't want to. Today's our Thanksgiving Sunday, and I want us to open our hearts to worship and giving God thanks and praise. And I won't be in your hair for too long. 20 minutes is very fine. If you can, let's go very quickly into Genesis chapter 14 and verse 17 to 24. We're in a series called Kingdom. And today I want to talk about what I call Kingdom Currency. Kingdom Currency. That there are various mediums of currencies in the kingdom. And on this Thanksgiving Sunday, it's very important. Yesterday as we were praying, I had a completely different message and the Lord dropped this in my spirit just as we were praying yesterday. And the scripture says in the book of Genesis chapter 14 and verse 17, the Bible says, And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of the Keldolora Moor. Right or Lemur, whatever there, and the kings that were with him at the valley of Shaveh, which is the king's dale. Verse 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, or Salem, brought forth bread, wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Verse 19. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, the Most High God, possessor of the heaven and the earth and he ble and blessed be the most high God which hath delivered thy enemies into thy hand and he gave him tithes of all and the king of Sodom said to Abraham give me the persons and take the goods to thyself and Abraham said to the king of Sodom I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord the most high God the possessor of the heaven and the earth that I will not take from a thread, take I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou should say I have made Abram rich. Verse 24. Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me. Anna Eshkol Mamre. Let them take their portion. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 to 7. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 to 7. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. If any man teaches otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, right? And dotting about questions and strife of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil, and surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Please underline that. It says, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. It says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Verse 7, for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord bless the reading of his word. I, I remember I once traveled to, uh, I think it was Solwezi or Kalumbila. And in one of the mines, uh, they have this canteen or, not canteen, they're like restaurants and, and golf clubs at the mines. And they have everything that you want and they have amazing foods and stuff except at one stage I don't know if it's still the case but you could not use money there so you could have the money but your money didn't work there because you needed to be a member 
and there was a subscription basis upon which you can purchase and eat from there. So we went there and we went with cards and we were told, unfortunately, your cards don't work here. Unfortunately, your money doesn't work here. You're required to be a member of this club and then there's a subscription. <laughs> And in fact, you don't just go into the club. You, you, you have to be invited into the club. And somebody needs to bring you. It was there I learned that it is not all places that money works. Likewise, let me tell you, spiritually, it is not all places that money works. It is not all places that gain will be the end result or the best result for you. Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. It says that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened that we may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Where is this? In the... So God has domiciled the riches of his inheritance, Right? or the, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in a place called the saints. And you cannot get that with money. You can only get it by faith. Somebody say faith. That to access what is of God's requires what we call faith. That God has a hidden an economy of blessings, an economy of favor, and has domiciled it in the saints. It means, listen to me very carefully, that God's most valuable asset here on the earth is the saints. He has not hidden his inheritance in the earth. He has not hidden his inheritance in animals. He has hidden his inheritance in the saints. It means, let me say this outrightly, that spiritually there is an economy and that economy does not thrive or does not place gain as the highest outcome. That economy places souls as the highest currency. You, you know the way our country, we have a currency, but it's not your currency that gives your country stability. It's something called reserves. And those reserves are either denominated in another currency or denominated in gold. And that's what gives us stability. That's what gives us a currency. So, although in this country, the kwacha is the currency, there is another currency somewhere that is traded on a market that is not accessible to you and I. But it is that market that determines the value even of that kwacha which we sold dearly. Likewise, I want you to know that in the kingdom, the highest form of currency of the spirit realm, what is being traded is the souls of men. That this which we call the kingdom, the advancement of the kingdom is not based on material things. The advancement of the kingdom is based on men. Not just men, but the souls of men. That there is a trading. And if you pay attention very carefully to this, because I don't want to take time. I want to get out of your hair very quickly. What happens in the story is Lot leaves Abraham in Genesis chapter 13. And Lot pushes his eyes towards Sodom and Sodom breaks out into a war with neighboring kings and the four kings invade Sodom and four kings invade Sodom and Lot happens to be a casualty of his lust of the eyes that Lot saw Sodom as his resting place and in looking at Sodom, when there is a war in Sodom, Lot happens to be a casualty of the war. It had nothing to do with him. But because he was in that domain, 
Lot was also taken captive. Lot could not claim and say, listen, this has nothing to do with me. I'm actually Abraham's descendant. He could not get out of it by pulling the Jewish card or Jew pulling the Abrahamic card. He was taken captive. But one of the guys escapes. Are you listening to me? One of the guys escapes and goes back to Abraham. And the news given is that your, your nephew, Lot, has been taken captive. And Abraham mounts a rescue mission because he heard that Lot had been taken captive. You're not understanding. It was not that Lot, Lot lost his riches. It was not that Lot lost things. It is that Abraham was concerned with a soul that he mounted a rescue strategy. What prompted Abraham to, to raise a company of men to enter that captivity or that place of captivity is because a soul had been captured. Now, for those of you who have not figured this out yet, what prompted Jesus to leave heaven? Was not the economic affairs on the earth. It was that souls had been taken captive. So, so kingdoms, please listen to me. Kingdoms are established on the dominion of souls or men. It is the ability to influence and affect the souls of men. That the kingdom is established. Now, now, this is important for us who are a, a, a kingdom as well. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 14 and verse 17, it says, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Yeah. Now, now, what this is saying is the kingdom of God is not your preferences or tastes. Your, the kingdom of God is not your acquisition or your consumption. That's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom has not come because you, you are now boiling. <laughs> Jesus said, <laughs> repent. For the kingdom of God is that what? It is when repentance was available that the kingdom became accessible. Repent. That means the kingdom of heaven is established on what we call righteousness. Somebody say righteousness. And it's also established on peace. Somebody say peace. And it's also established on what we call joy. Somebody say joy. Now, all of these are not, are not external factors. They are internal virtues. So, the kingdom of God is established on virtues. So, while other kingdoms, please pay attention to me, will benchmark on the expansion or territorial expansion, right? They'll say, oh, we've put up a flag. That's a new kingdom. The way the kingdom of God is benchmarked is when the hearts of men are filled with righteousness, with peace, with joy. That comes by the Holy Ghost. Listen, just like Abraham, let me tell you something. I, I don't know how best to say this. Many of us believe that the advancement of the kingdom will be when we take over certain things. And I'm not saying it is, it is completely wrong. But the priority is the redemption of men and of souls. More than it is the redemption of positions or places. Listen, I, I, I said this the other weekend and I'm not shy. There, there's no league table between hell and heaven to say who has the most CEOs. But someone has bewitched us to believe that that's, that's what counts. Someone has bewitched us to believe that this is what heaven and hell are contending over.
that Satan will say I have more celebrities and heaven will be saying wow we are short we need more <laughs> that's not what heaven measures heaven measures righteousness heaven measures the righteousness that has entered the souls of men this is the kingdom. If there is a kingdom being established from heaven, the trademark of that kingdom will be righteousness, peace, and joy. Seek ye first the kingdom and and then what? Now, now you, why are you seeking all these things and hoping righteousness will be added unto you? Because that's the modern day approach. We seek all these things and hope righteousness will be added unto us. When the Bible has told us our pursuit should be the kingdom that is built on righteousness and all these things that we are chasing after are a byproduct. You, you see, this is what happened to Lot. Lot was looking for a resting place. Abraham was looking for God. Lot was looking for things. And that's what landed Lot in Sodom. And Lot was a casualty of his misfocus and deception that led him to a place that looked great. But eventually, it ended up being his captivity. If we do not place righteousness at the helm of the virtues of a believer. We will be praying and praising, but we will be in captivity. <laughs> we, we will have religious activities, but we will be bound in captivity. Because this kingdom is not, it is not established on the advancement the way you and I think. It is established when men Turn their hearts to righteousness. Somebody say righteousness. Now, now this righteousness is not just right standing before God. But it's also doing right in the sight of God. I know that's what people have said. We are in right standing. It is not just right standing. That now that you are in right standing, the expectation is that you will do right in the sight of God. That our activities and our endeavors will be driven by doing right in the sight of God. So, so when we look at the kingdom and if God has placed the inheritance of heaven in the saints, it means that what Satan will look for is will look for saints so that he can capture the kingdom. And I want to show you that, that, that the thing that you are desperately searching for, the enemy has no qualms giving it to you. Nothing. Yeah. In fact, let, let me show you why, why this is important. If you go now to verse 20 of Genesis chapter 14, right? I want you to see what happens in Genesis chapter 14 and verse 20. Let's go to verse 21, sorry. 21, right? And 22, actually it's the better part. Sorry, 21, correct, correct. The Bible says, let's read this together. And the king of Sodom, Abraham, give me, huh? I, I don't like that version you've put. You've, you've, there's, my version is a KJV. But that's not what it says. Okay. It's okay. Right? We can leave it there. Now, this word that you see there, that says persons. Do you know what it is equivalent to? One version says souls. 
Now, <laughs> the king of Sodom said, give me the persons and take what? The goods too? Who's speaking? The king of where? So he's the principality of Sodom. He's the ruler of Sodom. So it means it's the nature not only of Sodom, but the kingdoms that are not of God to say we'll give you whatever as long as you give us the people. If the king of Sodom is willing to exchange everything for the people, what is more valuable in the spirit realm? What is more valuable is souls. Now, now do you understand what the Bible says? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world, yet do what? Lose his what? Why is this issue of a soul a point of contention? I'll tell you. Because it is only with the soul that you can worship. The, the spirit is programmed by God. It, it is God's. <laughs> it, 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 in fact, the spirit in you, I think I took time yesterday to explain to people that the spirit is God in us. And it takes God in you so that God can speak to you. Oh, you are unable to speak to God. He has given us his divine nature. So God, guess what? Because man is unable... Oh, okay, all right, all right, all right, great. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, because you are not believing me. Because you are not believing me. All right? <laughs> I, I can see, I can see your, your doubt. And I can see your voices in the spirit. Some of you don't understand. Have you never heard the part where Jesus, the Bible says, and Jesus answered their thoughts? They were speaking in their mind, mind they went, mm. all right, let me show you this. Genesis chapter 2. Uh, great. And verse 6. Then we go to verse 7. 6 for context, verse 7 is my main point. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Right? Verse 7. Read this on the count of three. One, two, three. Oh. How did he form man? From the dust of the ground. Now, that he formed you does not mean life had entered you. This thing called life came when God breathed. And when he breathed into you, the Bible then says, and man became a living what? That it was the breath of God that made man a living so now this very scripture here that says living soul the soul word is the same word are you listening to me that the king of Sodom is called Nefesh that the king of Sodom said give me the souls I'll give you the goods you are breaking your neck for the goods and what you are unaware of is you have paid the price. And that price is your soul. <laughs> when we break our neck for the goods, what has been, ex oh, there's been an exchange. There has been an exchange. You see, it is this, this scripture that has bred the demonic activity called the merchants of souls. This is where you hear, he sold his ears. Could I queen? 
I need a visa, so I don't want to say it loud. <laughs> that there are men that are merchants of souls. And the emphasis is that we will give you, oh, we will give you all you desire for souls. I, I, I know, I know a, 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 a family that came, they came for prayer, they came for prayer. I need to be cryptic. And what they had said is that one of the, 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 the pillars of our family had died. And when the pillar of the family had died, as they were clearing the household, he left behind someone. They found articles. <laughs> ah, ah, <laughs> oh. And as they found articles, they wanted to move the articles. And, and an elder said, if you move those things, you will provoke trouble. And the custom was the articles needed to be passed on. Now, the, the person who was supposed to receive them was given a message to say, can you come and collect the family articles? He said, how <laughs> they, then they said there needs to be a lot. Then the other person also said, ah. So I asked, so you, what happened to you? He says, No, me, I just left. I said, it doesn't work like that. You, you don't bring yourself out. There was a covenant that was made that there will be wealth in this household and the cost of that wealth will be souls. So I said, listen, this thing doesn't work like that where you just say, no me, I'm like Switzerland. I'm, I'm neutral. You guys have beef. Do you remember, how many of you remember the, the, was it the first or the second world war? Both wars. It was the neutral countries that were invaded. And the war broke out because those who said, ah, us, we have nothing to do with this. There's, if you are neutral, you will be taken. So you need to have a stance and you need to have a position. It, it, listen, you need to have a stance or a position because if you are neutral, gain will come towards you and you will not know that that gain will be at the cost of so, so the Bible says in the book of Timothy that there are those that purport that gain is godliness. And the strategy of the kingdoms of this world is to bring gain as the ultimate desire. And so what we do is we focus on gain and we throw aside godliness. And what we believe is we're establishing the kingdom. What we believe, the Lord have mercy. The Lord have mercy. And you know, as great as Sodom was, we we're praying about it this morning. Sodom was, was, a, was a city. If, you, know, you know how big Sodom was? That it took four kings to besiege it. So it's not a small place. But you see here that the heart of Sodom, the spirit behind Sodom was that there was always an exchange. And that exchange was to take the souls of men and give them an exchange for gain. Important. Now listen to me. It therefore means if the kingdom is going to advance, it's not going to advance by gain. 
That's why Jesus said, whoever comes to me must first deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. He also goes on to elaborate and then he says, whoever loses his life for my sake will gain it. But whoever tries to save his own life will lose it. So, so there, is a, there is a currency and an exchange and that is the souls of men. Are you hearing me so far? So it means we need to, if, if only the church would understand that darkness has placed a higher value on souls than riches. If we would notice that, we would then realize that our riches are in the soul. That's why the Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health as your... Now, we have taken the emphasis and taken it the wrong way. The man was trying to tell you, I pray your soul prospers. We have now taken it. God wants us to... <laughs> The issue is not prosperity. The issue is the emphasis is out of order. And because the emphasis is out of order, it can never produce godliness. What it will produce is greed. You know, you know there are some chemicals that, they, that to produce a mixed, mixed a, a complex mixture or to, to produce some substances requires an order and that order will determine what is produced you're not hearing me the order will determine what is and if we as a kingdom emphasize gain above godliness what will be produced is mammon. What will be produced is Babylon. Uh, you, 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 you don't believe me. You don't believe me. You don't know that in Babylon, there, there's an inventory. I don't know how many of you, yeah, you, 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 you do you know, bookkeeping, accounting. There's, there's the part where you check inventory. The stock. Let me show you Babylon stock. Let's go to Revelations chapter 12 and verse 18. And we will end. Revelation, sorry, Revelation chapter 18, verse 9 to 13. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 9. Are you with me so far? Now you might be wondering, what does this have to do with Thanksgiving? We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Because some of you are like, Thanksgiving, souls. What's happening? What are we thanking souls? You, you, you don't get it. <laughs> Let me show you this. And the, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication lived deliciously. In fact, go, go back to verse, verse 7, maybe so that we can understand the context. Right? Hey, how much she glorified herself and live delicious. This is Jezebel. So, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and I am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. I, hmm, death and mourning and famine. What, wow. And she <laughs> will be utterly burnt with fire. Wow. Oh. Jezebel will go down in one day. Babylon will go down in one day. And this is the problem with many of us. What we are striving for are things which will pass away. <laughs> Not even over a period. In one day. You've spent your whole life I know a guy. 
he invested his whole life savings in Zimbabwe. A white man. He worked for 40 years. Hard blue collar. 60 years old. He went to withdraw his savings. And it was in that year that the Zimbabwean economy went haywire. Inflation hit 1,000%. You guys were complaining about that. 1,000%. Do you know this year, Zimbabwe, this is the first month in the month of March that inflation has gone below 100%. It's at 92.8%. <laughs> A month on month, 100% inflation. This man invested his whole life savings. Whole, whole. Oh. And then they told him he was supposed to have retired a millionaire in US dollars. And that is the time when 1000% inflation, the Zim dollar went from thousands to millions to billions to trillions. It took trillions to buy bread. You know me, I, I, I grew up in Zimbabwe in high school, I suffered. As a Zambian. Oh, those guys used to laugh at us. But I stood as a prophet for the nation. Oh, there are friends who are watching me right now. I prophesied. I said, in my, before I leave this school, the Zim dollar will crash. I said, if I be a man of God, and I wasn't at that stage, but... For sure, it crashed. We used to suffer as Zambians. You know what they used to say to us? They used to say Zambians would cross over from Livingstone to Vic Falls. And the Zambian would throw away the money and take the wheelbarrow. They would come and buy bread. Conrad is like, yeah, because he's from Livingstone. They suffered. They, they would say that we needed wheelbarrows to buy bread. And as God would have it, they would need wheelbarrows. This man now had invested his life savings. And instead of retiring a millionaire, he was told, you have absolutely, in fact, you even owe us. Because, because there are fees that have been accumulating. And what you have left, just... The Bible says, don't store up your treasure. Don't store it up here. It's not telling you this for no reason. Now, we as the kingdom of God, the church today, we are storing up here. We are storing up here. Instead of storing up where moth, where rust, where corruption cannot reach. The Bible says, she will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord who judges her. Verse 9. And the kings of the earth, the kings of what? What have they done? Who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her. Oh. Shall bewail her and lament her. You know the tragedy of this is that what they are crying for is that she's dead. There was this woman who was once delivered. She used to have this thing in her eye that if she looked at you, she received the power. And the power was that if she looked at you, I heard this testimony, she looked at you one way. If she was vexed with you, she would look at you and affliction would strike you. So she confessed, I carry this power. And the man of God prayed for her and delivered her. She was vexed. She said, I didn't ask you to get rid of it. She said, I beg, give me my power back. Because she needed to deal with, <laughs> with some people. She said, give me my power back. You know, I say this because the tragedy of, the, of mankind is when Jesus comes back, I'm not sure the church will be happy to see him. The way you are laughing. 
you be like, ah, boss, this is when you want to come, ah. I've not even, we've not bowed out yet. We have not married yet. You want to come here? I go to heaven a single woman. Ah, the de- <laughs> to fia- <laughs> People are more concerned with marriage than heaven. I, I die. Me. You hear people say, I die. Me. Single. Oh God, I die at this level. Me. Give me sister joy. Oh, I die. Sister Joy, oh, I die. <laughs> Your friends are praying, give me dollar or I die. You are saying, give me Sister Joy, or I die. If I die, I die. They will lament her. They will. And these are the kingdoms we are aspiring to conquer. Ones that will not lament for unrighteousness but they will lament for the death of Jezebel do you remember in the book of Acts chapter 16 when a girl who had the spirit of divination was delivered hey, people were vexed people were we will defend anything that leaves us in a profitable position even at the cost of righteousness and so now the, the, now the kingdom is measured on finance not faith the inventory of members is based on accolades the Lord help us we are going somewhere. You are saying, what does this have to do? The Bible says, go to verse 10. Standing afar for fear of her torment. Saying, alas, alas. The great, <laughs> the great city Babylon. That mighty city. For in one hour. In what? Thy judgment has come. Oh, one hour. One hour, this city called Babylon will be judged. What? And by the way, this is Revelation. In case you are thinking, this is Daniel. Meaning it's coming. It's not, a, it's, <laughs> it's coming. No, it's coming. It's coming. And we are not positioning ourselves for what is coming. We're not. The, the way we are positioned now. We will, all, we will all be shocked. Tribulation will shock us. You don't even know whether it will be a, a crack in the sky. You don't know. You don't know. Whether it's a trumpet, you also will be confused. Fish fillet sticker. Ah, Malesa. Yeah. By your way. Oh, by your way. Verse 11. I'm showing you the inventory. Now, let me show you the inventory and the merchants of the earth. The what? These are the traders of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth their merchandise. Ah! Verse 12. The merchandise read of gold and silver, precious stones, Pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, uh-huh. and all manner of vessels of, all manner of vessels of most precious wood, and of brass and, and, uh-huh, continue, cinnamon, and odors, ointments, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, beasts, Sheep, horses, chariots, 
slave and so part of Babylon and Jezebel's inventory is the soul when you look at her balance sheet <laughs> under assets this is souls Where is your soul? I, I'm not talking about have you come to church. I'm asking you where is your... Now, what, what, is, what is this got to do with thanksgiving? Bless the Lord. And all... Not, not, that, not all that is within my hand... Not all that is in my house. Not, not my degree. All that is within. What shall it do? Bless his holy. I want to show you that it is actually an ingratitude that causes men to be deceived by the kings of this world. If you go to Genesis chapter 14, when the king of Salem came, the king of Salem, who was Melchizedek, he said, blessed be Abraham, right? From about, what is it, verse 17, right? He said, blessed be Abraham, okay? The conqueror, right? Go back, Genesis chapter 14. I don't want to read it quickly. And the king of Sodom, da, 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 da. Uh, I've gone too far, 20 or 18, 18, 18. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, bought bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. Verse 19. And he blessed him. He did what? And he said, blessed be Abraham, the Most High of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Verse 20. You've skipped. And blessed be the Most High, which hath delivered thy enemies into thy and given and he gave him so, so what do you see Abraham does after victory he shows gratitude and look at the first thing that the king of Sodom does he says wait there's something you don't have The Bible says, he said, keep, keep the goods. Give me the what? That means that Abraham was not going to take the goods. That means that Abraham went into Sodom and he discerned, I can't take this. Less the portion that the men had taken. He discerned that I can't take this. And the king of Sodom said, wait, you left something behind. I have a proposition for you. Give me the people. I'll give you the properties. What happens? The king of Sodom immediately wants to make Abraham feel like he's not blessed. God has just pronounced he's blessed. And the king of Sodom immediately comes and tells him, there's something you are missing. Does this sound familiar? Do you remember what happened to Eve? Did God say you should not eat of the trees in the garden? And Eve said, no, except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Do you know that in that garden was the tree of life? That if they ate of the tree of life, they would have experienced eternal life. But they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Why? Because immediately Satan made them feel like they are not blessed. That the real blessing 
Now, if you now go to the book of 1 Timothy, that's why the Bible now says in verse 7, it says, on verse 6, it says, Godliness with contentment is great what? Godliness with what? What is contentment? Gratitude. Where are you content? In your soul. Contentment is an attribute of the soul. Not the, yes, the spirit can be, the spirit is a spirit. Guard your heart. Because from it flows the issues of. So, so do you know that what protects and preserves us is when we develop an attitude of thanksgiving. Because the moment you become discontent, it's not just a feeling, it will become an atmosphere. And that atmosphere will begin to produce affliction around you. So you're not giving thanks just because something has happened. The Bible says, in every circumstance, give your preservation is in your ability to give thanks your life is in your ability to give thanks Abraham comes from a successful venture and immediately he gives thanks he says Lord I thank you that the tithe was an act of thanks. But immediately, the king of Sodom comes and says, wait a minute, there's something that is missing from your life. Many of us have been captured by covetousness. That we have become discontent in places that we should be giving thanks. And we have found our souls captured by depression we have found our hearts captured by anxiety we have found our christian experiences short of what god has promised because a strange voice has entered after god has pronounced you blessed and has now said there's something i can give you but i came to declare that we will not take any blessing from the enemy we will not take any breakthrough from the enemy that whilst he's promising a short-term breakthrough what he's saying in the long run is i will take your soul we are about to launch a rescue mission that rescue mission will be prompted by thanksgiving that rescue mission will be prompted by praise this morning as we were praying elder began to declare how when the uh, uh, king jehoshaphat was in the time of battle he engaged in a strange tactic and that tactic was not a spear that tactic was not a javelin that tactic was not an arrow that tactic was he sent praises to the front line i could see the enemy looking at unarmed men reaching the front line what they were not understanding was that their weapons are not carnal prayer, but they are mighty in god and the enemy thought what are these unarmed men looking like what are they doing in front of a host of enemies but what they were unaware of is that there was a weapon that was released in the realm of the spirit and that was thanksgiving and that was praise and the bible says as they praised him the lord sent an ambushment into the camp of amnon i came to declare your praise today is about to confuse your enemy your enemy will stand before you and look at you unarmed unaware that in the spirit you are heavily armed you are armed with praise you are armed with thanksgiving you are armed with gratitude you are armed with an understanding that the god who has brought me this far he will not bring me here to leave me to die 
some of you are still looking at me funny when the Bible says when David stood before Goliath they looked at David's weapons and they said you look like you are lacking weapons you look like you are lacking armory here take Saul's armor take Saul's shield take Saul's sword the problem is David decided Saul was an ungrateful man hey, I cannot wear the armory of an ungrateful man so David said I may not have the degree I may not have the car I may not have the connections but I have a God and the God that delivered me from the hand of a lion and from the hand of a bear he will deliver me you cannot praise God and not see a victory you cannot praise God and not begin to imagine victory you cannot praise God and remain where you are oh I don't know who I'm talking to today the Bible says Paul and Silas were bound they were captive they were chained and were put in the inner prison but they began to launch a rescue mission and that rescue mission was a mission of praise that rescue mission was a mission of thanksgiving and at the midnight hour they did not lament when the enemy thought they would cry they began to praise i don't know who i'm talking to 2022 was terrible the enemy thought you would cry but you said lord i will bless you at all times and your praise will forever be on my lips and on my mouth i dare you today to launch a praise and i see lot being recovered i see a lot being recovered i see your family being recovered as you praise they laugh at you say how can you thank god we just lost everything but we give god thanks we give him glory as job declared naked i came naked i will go the lord given and the lord taken i wish there were some people that are the spirit of david and say lord as long as you don't take your spirit from me i'm okay they may take the car but they can't take your spirit they may take my position but they can't take your spirit they may take my money but they can't take your spirit the money will pass away the jobs will pass away all the positions will pass away kingdoms will fall all kingdoms will drop but those that give god praise the bible says those that put their trust in the lord are like mount zion they cannot be shaken they cannot be shaken they cannot be shaken i said they cannot be shaken the dollar may go to 22 i won't be shaken they may issue a 
precioso. 